In this video, we're going to look at how the rate law for a first order reaction determines how the concentration of a reactant changes over time. So for a first order reaction, we have our rate of reaction V of T is equal to some constant times, we'll say reactant A here to the first power. So if we had some hypothetical reaction here, uh, this would only depend on the concentration of A, how fast the reaction goes, what its rate is, and it depends on A to the first power times our rate constant. And according to the definition we had for our rate of reaction from previous videos, this is equal to uh, negative of the negative of 1 over stoichiometric coefficient of A times the derivative of the molarity of A, the concentration of A, with respect to time. Um, for the sake of this video, uh, we're just going to assume that this is 1 for the sake of simplicity. So now, assume that this is 1 for the sake of simplicity. Sometimes you'll see this uh, derived and they don't mention that assumption, but this make thing, makes things a little bit simpler and easier to deal with. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, integrate uh, this rate law. So this is a rate law, and what we want to get is called an integrated rate law, which tells us how the concentration of A depends as a function of time. Okay, so we're going to multiply both sides here by dt and divide the, both sides by uh, the concentration of A. So what we're going to get is we have minus k dt, if I move the minus sign over, equals d concentration of A over concentration of A. So that's just rearrangement of this equation and setting new A equal to 1. All right, so what we want to do is integrate both sides of this equation here. So we want to integrate and integrate. So we're integrating from 0 to t. We're integrating this from the concentration of A at t equals 0 to the concentration of A at t equals t, which we're going to call A sub t. All right, so if we do that integration, over here the integral of dt is just t. t from t to 0 is just t minus 0, which is t. So this side becomes minus kt. Over here, the integral of 1 over a dA is the natural log of a. That's integral of 1 over x is natural log of x. And then we have natural log of a t minus natural log of a naught. And the difference of two natural logs is their ratio. So you should be able to convince yourself that this definite integral comes out to be natural log of a of t times a naught. Okay, well if we take e both sides uh, to the power of e, what we're going to end up getting is e to the minus kt equals a of t over a naught. So if we multiply both sides by a naught, we have what we were finally looking for, which is we have the concentration of a as a function of time. And for a first order reaction, that is equal to the initial concentration of A, A naught, times E to the minus KT. Okay, so we took our rate law and then we did separation of variables and integrated it to get our cons time dependent concentration. And so this is called an integrated rate law. And more specifically, this is a first order integrated rate law because it is the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. So the name makes sense. Okay, so what does this imply about the behavior of the concentration of A as a function of time, given that A is some reaction or some reactant here? Okay, well, I've got that graphed over here. If we have the concentration of A as a function of time, we see that it is a decaying exponential, e to the minus kt. So over time, it is a decaying exponential from an initial value of a naught decaying down to zero. And the speed at which it decays down to zero is dependent on the rate constant k. 
I have three different graphs here which are very crudely drawn trying to demonstrate exponential decay and probably failing to do so due to lack of artistic ability. But we uh, have these three graphs here where K1 is greater than K2 is greater than K3 indicated by the proper colors uh, yellow, green, and purple. So you see the um, actually I have this in reverse so that's not good. Let me go ahead and fix that. Um, K1 is actually the greatest because it's going down the fastest, so I need to reverse that. So it's good that I caught this. So you know this is done in real time because I made that mistake and just caught that right now. All right, so we're going to change that to each of those is greater than. Okay, so K1 is greater than K2 is greater than K3, so K1 is a, in yellow is the fastest reaction, as you see it decays to zero the fastest. And similarly, <clears throat> then if you take the natural log of both sides, if you have the natural log of A of T equaling the natural log of A0 A uh, minus KT, let me write out that. If you take the natural log of both sides here, you have natural log of AT equals natural log of a naught minus kt. Actually, let me reverse the order here. So you have minus kt plus natural log of a naught. So what you have here is just y equals mx plus b. It's a linear equation. You have a variable log of a of t is y, t is x, and the slope here uh, in this graph is the negative rate constant. So if you plot uh, the log of the concentration over time versus time, then you'll, the slope of that, if it's first order, that will be a straight line and the slope will be the negative rate constant. And you see that your intercept there is just the natural log of your initial concentration and your natural log goes down over time with some uh, linearly decreasing value.